I've been working on my master plan to deploy a solar array to power my house indefinitely for free. I'm talking about zeroing out my electricity bill and leaving the excess electricity generation capacity to run a Bitcoin and some other mining rigs. That's gonna help me earn passive income, pay off the miner, pay off the panels. I got a real life money cheat code. <laughs> now I'm kind of wondering if instead of deploying a generator, why not utilize at least a basic battery system? Hey, I'm Voss, you're on the Voscoin YouTube channel. I make crypto content where I'm always trying to earn, learn more to earn more, deploying my capital, getting my money working for me, stuff like that. Uh, this is gonna be just the next piece in the solar series, if you will. It's not an official playlist and all that stuff, but I'm just kind of working through everything in real time and sharing with you what I'm doing, why, and how I hope that this will not only help me to generate wealth, but also to preserve wealth. So I've run a lot of numbers, I've gotten a lot of quotes, all that kind of stuff. And I went through those in more detail in previous videos, but let me just give you a speed run through my current planned system. It's gonna cost me about $66,000 before any tax credits. It's, it's pretty expensive. My actual like price per watt was actually closer to $2, $2.25, $2.30. Uh, if I was entrenching and doing a ground mount array and it, and it wasn't so far away uh, from my house. So that's adding a lot of cost, like literally potentially almost a dollar per watt of cost. And at the end of the day, that's just the way it goes. So, uh, but I'm also contemplating bringing Tesla Powerwall 3 specifically into this equation. And I'll explain more why here in a second, but let's just take the current system I have and the current pricing, right? Uh, so each microinverter, you buy one microinverter per panel. And they're estimating that I'll produce about 30,000 kilowatt hours per year. When I mapped this up in Open Solar, it personally told me that I would, with the exact same system, which has me a little skeptical, maybe a little worried, that I would be producing 28,000 kilowatt hours per year. That's a, that's a decent difference, right? And if I deployed a 70 panel system, I would then have a 30.1 kilowatt array up from 21.5. And I would be estimated to produce 38,000 kilowatt hours per year, an entire 10,000 kilowatt hour per year generation increase. Let me explain one of the reasons why I want so much juice. Here's just uh, some chat GBT quick stuff. Uh, you know, I do all this math manually. This is sometimes an easier way to just kind of spit it out, especially if I need to show it here on the tube and all that. Uh, so 3,500 watts, right, to kilowatts divided by 1,000, 3.5 kW or kilowatt. Multiply the number of hours in a day, 24, by the number of days in the year, 365, 30,000 kilowatt hours per year. So technically, if we take these numbers, uh, running a Bitmain Antminer S21 or some of the other current generation miners would consume my entire solar generation. So I'd still be paying out of pocket to run my house and you know everything in it. The best Bitcoin miner in the world right now was recently released, the XP, and it consumes about 3,600 watts. There are some latest generation viable alternatives, right? Like the Antminer L9, which I recently deployed on my mining farm. Uh, these miners are supposed to consume about 3,360 watts. And while that may not seem like a big difference, it, it, has, it has a huge leap in uh, the annual kilowatt hour consumption, right? Uh, so I make content, I work on my mining farm and all this crazy stuff. This is Coin Mining Central, we're an affiliate with them. We got coupon code VOSCOIN to save some coin. If you enjoy the free content that we're posting all the time here and you do want to grab a miner, we've campaigned with them to have the best coupon code they've ever offered. And we've been working with them for years. It's been a good experience. So to bring it back to the power usage, right? And to put it into perspective here, 3,000 watts, three kilowatts over the course of a year, 26,000 kilowatt hours a year. So that 500 watts is like 4,500 kilowatt hours uh, per year that you've got to make up. So running the numbers, right, I, I want at least 10,000 kilowatt hours for my house and everything else involved. 
Uh, I, I don't want to be worrying about cranking the electric heat up or cranking the AC. Uh, those are big energy consumers, among other things. So I'm thinking maybe we need to go more towards like 70 panels. And if we're going to do that, I'm thinking about integrating Tesla Powerwall 3 and using their built-in inverter, right? So let's just say I, I, I deploy my first system as like leg one and then I do this as leg two, right? Let's just take that as the example. I could deploy a power wall with the built-in inverter uh, that could power the system expansion. The inverter capabilities is 11.5 kilowatt AC. And if I used one, it would be enough for 20, 430 watt panels. Uh, it would also be m more than plenty uh, if I deployed two power walls. So when you can go and buy a power wall a la carte, places like this random website I pulled up. You can also get things like the gateway, which kind of help with load management and running the things uh, and these other miscellaneous Tesla power wall, solar system attachments and so forth. You can also buy it directly from Tesla, but they're always trying to stick you with an install. But how do I buy this thing without also ordering an installation service? But this is where it's crazy, right? So you can buy like one power wall from them for around 11 grand, but then you go to two and it's only 16.4. Several thousand dollars come off the top from going from one power wall to two power walls. And you also look at something like the gateway that's coming in much cheaper. And also what are these accessories we need? Because if I go and buy those from like a reseller or something, I don't want to get ripped off on those, especially if they're absolutely uh, needed right so we saw that other site it was something like 9100 so we could get two there and then their gateway I think was 1600 bucks and then we'd probably need I don't know say $500 worth of accessories so it's like $20,000 when you look at their pricing and the massive install fee it's not too different and what I'm talking about uh, there's no install so why wouldn't I just get a generator I've got a big propane tank uh, and I could do a propane generator. Makes a lot of sense. I'm sitting on a lot of propane fuel. Uh, huge output from this thing when it's running, right? 22 kilowatts. Uh, this is a solid size system. The generator will run more stuff uh, than say one or even two batteries, especially as long as you have fuel. Uh, but one of the huge upsides of the Tesla Powerwall 3 isn't just the battery storage. If you hook it up to be the string inverter for your solar array, it will run those panels. If all the other stuff is grid tied, if the grid's off, your panels are off, which is like really counterintuitive. However, utilizing the battery system and their engineering, it will continue to run the solar panels. So you will recharge your juice during the day for free, right? It's already a sunk cost. Uh, whereas if I'm running this generator, okay, it's pretty easy. It's pretty straightforward. It's classic, uh, you know, solution here, but I'm also going to be burning propane. Like that's, I don't, I don't make propane. I'm going to buy that at a premium. Uh, so you take this price, free shipping, lift gate, stuff like that. I got to run a gas line. I got to dig a trench. I got to do the install or hire out for it. Uh, before you know it, this easily becomes 10 to $15,000. Realistically, I think we'd be looking at 12, 15 K, uh, to get this generator installed. Uh, so I look at that price. And I think that I could get into one power wall at this point for about that price or maybe even a little less or get into two power walls installed for a little to maybe several thousand dollars more. But that ability to run the panels in the event of an outage, I see a lot of benefit to that. What kind of stuff can you run with a power wall anyway, right? So it's, it's an equation. The Tesla Powerwall has a usable storage of 13.5 kilowatt hours, which means you can use 13.5 kilowatt hours for one hour or one kilowatt for 13.5 hours, right? As just quick examples. You can run a 3,500 watt heat pump, right? Which is like literally like running a, a Bitcoin miner for four hours. You could run a 300 watt TV for 45 hours. A 200 watt refrigerator, wow, that is a really low power consumption refrigerator for 68 hours. Uh, a much more realistic, uh, estimate for a fridge, my opinion, right, is going to be like 600 watts. Uh, so that's just going to be three times. So we could take 65.7. Quick rip of math. Uh, so we could run one fridge for 22 hours. 
And my number one goal with the power outage is to be able to run the essentials for half a day. That's, that's that for me, that's goal number one, right? I want to run uh, for me, the well pump, which can be a bit of an energy hog when it fires up. Also the septic pump system, kind of the same thing. Then I also want to be running the refrigerators and our deep freezer, which we don't have yet, but I'm planning for it. So if I've got two fridges, let's say they're both burning up that same power consumption, but that goes from 22.5 hours to 11 hours and a quarter. All right, so that it, that's kind of within that 12 hour goal. Uh, then you take out some of the additional electric use uh, from some of the other things. And before you know it, right, you lose like three more hours and I'm kind of looking at eight hours, right? I, I'm running my, my internet, uh, absolutely. All our lights are LEDs, so that's pretty easy to deal with. Uh, you know, maybe charge a phone, other things like that. Oh, but remember the freezer? If we got that, well, that's, that's gonna take out a couple hours. And before you know it, right, I'm looking at maybe being able to run everything that I'm talking about for like five, six hours with that one battery system which really makes me think that two power walls is actually the absolute minimum, right? So you take two power walls and I've got, you know, twice the runtime and with a little bit of energy consumption, hopefully these aren't as energy hogging as I'm estimating, right? You know, I like to err on the side of caution. We're looking at like 12 hours. So if I can run for 12 hours, I should be able to survive until we get some sun. And then when we're getting sun, they'll recharge themselves and also provide supplemental power during the day. I haven't double checked this. I thought I would just throw it out here real quick, right? But so it's taking 20 panels at 430 watts. That's an 8.6 kilowatt array. Uh, and I'm, I'm trying I'm trying to use a little more chat GPT and other AI things, speed run uh, my research, but, and I haven't fact checked this. Uh, so I don't just take anything AI generates at face value, but under optimal conditions, the power wall will take 1.57 hours to fully charge with 20 solar panels, assuming they're generating their full potential. So then if I had two, it's obviously gonna be double. I just wanted to spit it out, you know, for uh, you know, clear visualization here. Uh, 3.14 hours, right? Then we take some energy use during that time period. And uh, roughly, I think that this would allow the batteries to charge during the day, supplemental power during the day as well. And then that power would get us through the night again so in the event of an extended power outage i think i'd love for you to fact check me that this would keep us running indefinitely and if it really came to it if something is just being an absolute energy hog maybe i'll unplug it right maybe i could condense everything from the two fridges into one and that would be a big reduction in that electricity consumption so i guess where my head's at with all of this uh is it's like i'm already to take alexa's words when we were talking about it we're already halfway there, right? If we didn't have or planning to do the solar, then maybe the generator is just the easier, cost-effective, like cost-conscious thing to do. But but we're really like halfway there. So why why wouldn't I? If it's my goals, right? And it gives me that off-grid uh, reliability and stability there. And you know, right now it's just me, Alexa, and my beautiful pop tails we hope to have kids soon and with kids in the equation i'm a little more conscious of rougher conditions and trying to create an environment where we could last we've got enough deer here to feed us for forever uh and turkeys and even bear alexa's basically a homesteader she's got her own garden going on and i've got a stockpile of mres uh, so there's that, right? And we're generating our own water with well. Uh, so we can absolutely survive an extended period here. But that period is uh, much less extended without being able to run our well, at least easily. I know there's other ways to access it, as well as our septic. And we buy meat and other foods in bulk or have uh, things that really, I don't take too much credit, Alexa has grown right in, in frozen storage, right? So if our freezer went down and, and we didn't have any way to save it, that could be a, the loss of $1,000. And it could be a loss of things that we may need like now. Cooking is really easy for us. And there's a pretty cool benefit with our propane setup because 
We can cook on the stovetop for a long time with propane, and we can also run propane heat, and our heat has a backup option uh, to run propane. So this is where my head's at on this stuff. I'll uh, just kind of continue to do research, figure it out, push forward. Also, everything I've talked about is obviously you know before the 30% uh, solar tax credit. That makes a substantial uh, difference uh, in the equation. I guess I, I should have said that earlier, right? When you take like doing the Tesla Powerwall setup that I'm talking about, right? And that's assuming I'm already going to do the panels, right? So that is the key difference there. But if I do the Tesla Powerwall and I get that tax credit, it's going to pretty much come in the same price as a generator and essentially have free fuel at that point and more utility, right? With that recharging aspect. So let me know. I'd love for you guys to pick apart my ideas and plan if you can help me improve them. Uh, as always, uh, I know it's a little bit off the normal, uh, uh, outside the normal wheelhouse of content, but um, this is something I'm interested in. I think it still all ties together. So uh, I hope you like the content. And uh, on that note, I'll see you on the next one. And moving forward, we need a lot of nice sunny days and it can rain at night. Okay, got to get that generation up.